Good morning, pregame crew. We will get started in just a few minutes. Wanted to just jump on here and let you know I'm here. Audio visual check, please. It is Monday, June 28th. Hi, Mr. Chad Bad, Corey, Veronica, 1988, All Natural, Bobby Orr, P Court, Mr. Styles. D man, how are you doing? Thank you, thank you, thank you, Yaz. Hey, P Court, Ernest, J man, Lieutenant Dan, Robert Mack, Ro Roger Morgan, hi. We have some interesting things happening this morning. Hey, David. You need more coffee? Me too. It's so funny. I get in my office and I get so anxious to get started. And then I lose track of time and realize, oh my gosh, I've been waiting for this minute. Log on, it's time. I was just going down a SoFi rabbit hole if lockup expires today. I think it does to a degree. And what that means is insiders, so I'll back up a little bit. The slang term for people who start up a company is founder shares. So if you put your blood, sweat, and tears into a company, you don't actually put money in, or you do put money in, plus blood, sweat, and tears, you get founder shares. And at the time, they may be worth six cents, seven cents, a dollar, but it's just an insider, cal just a calculation with you and your accountant. And then you go public, and then you tell all those insiders, you can't sell until it's available to the public for so long, and then you can start selling, because they don't want to just slam down the price right at the launch of the IPO. So that's what the lockup is for. That's the intent. And it, I am hearing, and we had someone in the room. It's so nice being part of a community. You can ask questions like, I'm hearing that SoFi is lockup, lockup period. So here, Tom, I asked for people to please share the news. SoFi shares are trading lower. This was past Friday. SEC filing shows the notice of effectiveness for conclusion. So the end of the lockup period. It's set to expire today for 5% or more of the shareholders and certain executives. It doesn't apply to pipe investors or so a certain category of investors. And that's usually the second tranche. So the second tranche of uh, investors can't typically sell. Those initial ones can sell first and then the, the second tranche can sell second. So that's what's happening to SoFi today. And I'm actually going to show you my account. I've never done this before. I'm practicing on y'all. So this is my swing account in, so here's my accounts. So I have different categories of accounts. I have the account numbers blocked. Don't try to hack me. Okay, anyway. So here's the volume. So five, 5.2 million. Space, 3.2 million, which is huge. Then Nokia. So I do this scan every morning and I post the results in TCG. I update those results. So that was a little shaky for me to do that, but that was the first time I've ever done it. So we'll get started officially in two minutes. Thank you, Crypto BTC. Thanks, Peculiar. D-Man, biggest fan. Virtual Cricket, Cindy. Hey, Tammy. Hey, Sarab. What's up, Ronnie Green? What's up, what's up, what's up? Oh, I wish I was holding NTLA. I was all over it back at the end of last year from a fundamental perspective and it just wouldn't get going. But I love the genomic space. I think it's fascinating in my country slang term, basically reprinting DNA to prevent certain diseases. I think it's awesome. So NTLA with amazing news, it's affecting CRISP, 
edit beam uh, RKG, arc g the genomic space for arc kathy wood uh, rgn regeneron has a genomic space and small division so it's just fascinating hey widow puppy yeah let's go let's do the thing if you are interested in my chart setup i use trading view to chart i also use thinkorswim to chart intraday for day trading but for most of my charting and sharing in the community, I use TradingView. Here's my chart setup. None of these items are absolutely critical for you to trade well. If it's too busy for you, then decrease clutter. I like to get on a pul pulpit every once in a while. So if you're new to the pregame show, just know that I may act like I'm preaching straight to you and you think, does she have a camera in my house? No, I've just been there. I have been thrown in the gutter by trading and left to die. Uh, I have actually been nauseated and sick over trading. I have had terrible things happen in trading. So experience is what you get when you don't get what you want. I got a lot of experience in this space and it's my job to help you not hit all the potholes. Don't aim for every freaking debacle that can happen in trading because I've done it. So just learn from me. So if I ever seem preachy, that's why, because I've been hurt a lot in trading and I've come out on the other side and I like to share and preach and help and not really preach, but that's sometimes what it sounds like because I was raised pretty Southern Baptist, but now I'm just a, well, that's a whole nother conversation. But anyway, I'm Chart Gal Lori. I'm part of the Chart Guys community. We teach technical analysis. We have a community, a thriving community where we help others in crypto, marijuana space, uh, commodities. And then we have just general news channel where we share the news for this morning, which has been absolutely fascinating. So we teach technical analysis. We do this pregame show every morning, Monday through Friday, to help you get organized for the day. The format is the Fab Four Futures, Commodities, Cryptos, and Movers and Shakers of the Day. We, I, and TCG, for the most part, never puts emphasis on fundamentals over technicals. It's always technicals over fundamentals. Technicals will signal incoming good fundamentals over and over and over. I'm going to go ahead and skip to NTLA right now and show you that. NTLA, amazing news this weekend. Look at this chart. This is a beautiful chart. Y'all know I love the squeeze. This was signaling something was going to happen before the news hit this weekend. So beautiful chart technically. So you could have entered this chart for on a technical reason last week because this is a beautiful setup. I love when the EMA start turning up, RSI turning up, volume turning up, TTM squeeze, beautiful chart. And then all of a sudden this weekend, surprise, surprise, great news. So a lot of the times the technicals lead the fundamentals. I call, I call that fun tech where you combine fundamentals and technicals. But on the movers and shakers over here, sometimes it may hit just because the news is so good and it's so explosive, or it just may be a technical reason or it's a combination of both. So that's how I choose the movers and shakers while always looking at this volume chart and seeing what's coming in and it can kind of give me a clue and say, Lori, go fishing for news. Hey, Roberto, Greg. Aw, that's nice, Crypto Barum. Oh my Lord, we are so popular. When I see these trolls, it's like, Lori, you're making it. You're finally making it. Hey, Eric and Crypto Baron. All right, so let's get started on the Fab Four Futures. We are in all-time high territory. We are testing the all-time high here. Your resistance, 427750, 427850. The next resistance is actually Fib resistance and psychological up at 4300. Let me show you what I mean when I say Fib. I think it's this one yeah so if we do a swing low swing high fib extension here we still end up in the 4294 4295 area so we have fib extension there let me delete this so it's not too busy so on the 15 minute we need to get over 42.76.25 to change that 15 minute trend back to the upside. If we kind of zoom out, we have a four hour bull flag in the making. It really stood out to me this weekend while I was studying and preparing for the swing report on the hourly. 
all week. I did not notice this until the week closed, so I'm not gonna claim to have noticed this, but we never lost the hourly EMAs, meaning a candle closed below that last and final EMA, the 21 EMA that I use. We never had a candle closed below on the hourly. Do you know what a feat that is? I'm not talking four hour a daily. That's easier. On the hourly. That is bulls defend, 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 defend. Not only did they defend, they went on offense and they drove it up. That's pretty impressive. So that will be the first change in character that I look for for ES will be an hourly candle close below the 21 EMA. The 8 EMA, yeah, it happened, but not the 21 EMA. So, but we still look like we have a four hour bull flag happening. So what does that mean? That means on time, I'm gonna clean all this off. On time frames like this, we get that lower low, bear break, no follow through, zoom higher, get that higher low, and now we're tr trying for that trend change. So we get these bear break fake outs. So I'll say that slower, bear break fake outs. We start looking for higher bull flag on the higher, t excuse me, bull flags on the higher time frames because that's very indicative of having bull flags when we just can't get that bear follow through. So 427750. So if I seem uber bullish this morning, I'm just neutral. I will accept whatever the market gives me and I will trade accordingly. The market is bullish until it's not. However, if bears were to take over in the short term and just have some healthy consolidation, I would not be surprised. So what does healthy consolidation look like? Let me, okay, y'all, I struggle moving from the Mac. Somebody got to help this girl. Okay, there we go. So healthy consolidation. So we're up, up, up. Let's pretend like this is the four hour. And then we pull back shallow. So you see that shallow is defined by 38.6% or less, which is the Fib extension. And that would still mean this could be a bull flag. That's healthy. So we pull back and sideways is healthy. So sideways or shallow is healthy. If we pull back more than, let's just round off to 38, 40%. If we pull back more than that, then on the bounce higher, we're looking for a lower high. And then we could EQ, we could EQ out all week. And remember our quarter closes this week, our months close this week. So we could look for potential volatility during the, everybody is trying to protect that candle close. It's not as important to me as it is so, as others make it out to be, but it's always something I'm definitely aware of. So the question is if bears step in, will it be shallow? Will it be sideways or will it be deep? How will we know the answer to that question and foreshadowing? It will be volume is the volume high these these bars down here will tell us bears have to bring it low to moderate volume from the bears will not do the job so just remember that 427750 427850 your resistance support 426850 426475 i will go over what i have planned for the day and at the end i will go over any tickers that i can possibly cram in if you're a tcg or no, nothing to worry about have no fear you can jump over into the tcg room Charting Man Dan will go live in 23 minutes and you can put your request in the ticker request thread and he goes over all of them. We do that three times a day, five days a week. So of the four, NASDAQ is holding up the strongest. So QQQ again, so all of these are invalid, not all, but let's just start over. I chart these to try to save time in the morning, but sometimes price moves. Okay, we're gonna just try this one more time, slow down. 14389. Lord have mercy. I'm just going to 1439050 oh, and 139425. Support 1435725, 1435450. Oh. This is a pretty major recovery by the bulls to pull back this far and then just slowly creep back up to that high. Let's look at it on a larger time frame. We don't have a bull flag, a potential bull flag on the four hour like we do with ES. Let's look at it on the 12 hour. On the 12 hour we do. So we have a potential 12 hour bull flag on NQ. NQ is the strongest. So let's go back to the four hour and let's just kind of hop around. NQ holding that eight EMA, beautiful. Four hour potential bull flag on ES. It's actually making ES look strong, stronger than NASDAQ despite its bounce. YM could be a four hour bull flag, but look how we are under all of this resistance overhead. We got a lot of resistance overhead on YM. Any infrastructure news could flip the script though for YM bulls Dow. 
RTY. RTY looks the weakest this morning. The rebalance is over. It's done as of last Friday, which could have been the spikes in volume over here, the reconstitution of IWM that was completed Friday, and now we're fully in it. So I don't like the way this squeeze fired on the hourly to the downside. We're getting stuck underneath the hourly EMAs, the potential bear flag. So definitely if there's a short today, I would be looking at RTY. So RTY is short for me. 50 MA on the 15 minute has been a brick wall. For the bulls resistance, 2331, 2336 support, 2325, 2321. I skipped YM values. You see this frown? See the 50 MA when it frowns overhead? I always take note of that frown. And I have in my notes, I wanted to cover this last week is I always make a point, I absolutely always make a point to remember what the moving averages are. The moving averages should not be just words that just randomly go in and out. Here's my notes for today if y'all just wanna see them. So the 50 day or 50, whatever the 50 moving average is, or you know, is it the hourly, the five minute, the 200, even stronger so because 200 time periods preceding the average of those time periods price is not closed above it for 200 time periods you know that is that's powerful so the 50 simple okay so what we're looking at now on the 15 minute so for the last 50 15 minute time periods price is not closed over three four three three four that's powerful. So when it comes up to touch that averages, it, it will it can push it down. If it gets over, that's even a more powerful statement. That shows the power of price. So don't don't lose sight of what the exponential and what the simple moving average is. The exponential is weighted more heavily to recent price action. So this here's a 21 EMA, the green is the 8. So the 8 EMA, that is the last eight time periods with the more recent periods weighted heavier saying we're finding out what's going on more recently maybe news has come out so that's why the ema is actually favored on shorter time periods because it's going to weight in the most recent action and give it more prominence and dominance over that average so don't lose sight of what our averages mean and i think i still haven't got given you the values resistance 34330 34368 34378 support Three four two seven nine, three four two six seven, and three four one nine six. So the story of today is RTY is the weakest for me, and then YM, ES we have a potential four hour bull flag, Nasdaq we have a potential twelve hour bull flag, and okay, so you have you're at the fair and you get to win a prize, and your prize is an ES four hour potential bull flag, or a Nasdaq potential. 12 hour bull flag which one do you choose you got to choose a bear you know you got to choose at the fair do you want the bear or the pony do you want the 12 hour nasdaq bull flag or the es four hour bull flag which one nasdaq why higher time frame higher credence it's more important the higher the time frame pattern the higher the time frame chart the more important it is so if you have conflicting hourly and four hour at the fair which one do you choose which signal the four hour signal or the hourly signal the four hour the higher time frame the more important so just remember that okay wow i didn't even have that on my vision to even preach about okay gold still don't like it look how weak it is so we just talked about the importance of these moving averages and the higher the number, the more important. Look at this 200 moving average. Oh, playing whack-a-doodle with the price. Like just karate chop to the throat. I've told my kids that, by the way, when they're like misbehaving. I don't call CPS because they're over 18 now. But I used to tell them, I'm just dreaming about karate chopping you in the throat right now. And I couldn't. I never did. But sometimes I just really visualize it, especially with my precious son. Okay, so gold getting karate chopped by the 200 MA. We were just looking at the four hour, I believe. Was it? What were we looking at? Okay, now I can't reproduce it. 15 minute? 
Oh well, it's getting karate chopped by so many EMAs, I don't even have to remember the time frame. Resistance 1779.10, 1779.50. You <laughs> can't understand anything I'm saying, that's funny. Okay, uh, you know what? Let's talk about what I'm saying. So TCG, here's the premise of TCG in a nutshell. We look for price. So if price is coming down, we're looking for lower highs. Actually, let me use path. So within TCG, we have terminology like, this is an equilibrium, which is a tightening pattern. This is a lower high. This is a higher low. What's a higher low? That means this price pivoted higher than this low. This is a lower high. Why? Because this was another high. We got a lower, lower low and a lower high. We couldn't clear this pivot. So it's all terminology that explains price action, which is king, queen, prince, and princess. I can talk about moving averages all day long, TTM squeeze all day long, RSI all day long. What's the most important price action? And that's what we do best at TCG, is analyze price action to determine the most likely scenario over here in this black area. No one knows what's going to happen. Not Timothy Sykes, not Jason, whatever his name is, nobody knows. And I'm talking about Jason Bond, that's his name. Nobody knows what's going to happen, but we use our price action data to determine the most likely scenario and we position ourselves to take advantage of that most likely scenario. If we're wrong, we get stopped out. If we're right, we run and buy new shoes. So that is what we do at TCG. So with gold, we still have this ever important Darvis box. Let me draw it around price action. 1797 and that low 1761, we're, we are stuck in this price action. This is gold purgatory. And I would say it's more purgatory for the bulls than the bears. The bears are slowing down and bringing price down. So I'd say it's a minor win for the bulls and we are squeezing, meaning price is getting super tight. So once it goes up or down, it could have a lot of follow through. Oil, oil super bullish. We had some oil news this morning. I'm not really sure what it was, but just be aware that it's there. Potential four hour bull flag support. 7372, 7288 resistance, 7419, 7422, 7445. Oil bulls are positioned well. A name that I covered this weekend was Rig. I covered as in I posted into the TCG chat room. So on Finviz, I posted Rig. You can pop over to Finviz, and on some of this data, you don't have to be. I'm not logged in right now, but you don't have to be an elite member to find this data. So on rig, let's see, insider, insider right here. Look at the buying. A million shares, okay, $4.5 million, 4.5, 4.4, 4.4. Rig has had a lot of buying, insider buying. You can find that on Finviz for free. You don't even have to be an elite member. So Finviz, excuse me, rig has a beautiful chart. I mean, if you zoom out, it's a disaster, but look at all this bull volume that's been pouring in. So that's the position I'm looking at, just adding a few shares to my kid's account and see how it goes. So because oil looks so strong, I'm looking at names that are in the XLE or XOP category. Bitcoin, uh, if you're a TCG member, look at what Dan said. He says it a lot more eloquently than me. Uh, we are getting a lower high right now compared to 35,500. So we're, we're having a little EQ form here. Nice bounce last night. You have support at 33864 and 32430. Okay. Ethereum. Ethereum a nice bounce as well. You have support at 1977, 1807, resistance 2083. Then after 2083, it's up at 2275. Uh, Dan is positioning himself for a monthly higher low attempt on Bitcoin and Ethereum. So that's a really larger time frame. I'm currently flipping Ethereum. I'm in bullish at the moment. I closed out my bullish position from yesterday. And now I'm bottom fish this 1965. 
So overall, crypto is somewhat healthy this morning, even though one's red, one's green. Overall, at least it's not bleeding. All right, let's go to the news source. Thank you, Robert Golding. Thank you, Robert Mack. I appreciate that. So Boeing, Boeing, uh, United Airlines said that they are poised, not actually, but poised to be buying 200 planes from Boeing. And then this morning we had some bad news from FAA about safety. Dur, dur, dur. Constantly canceling good news. Look at this rounded top on BA. So on any bounce, bears are going to be looking to pile in on this rounded top. So I like Boeing as a short, despite, now this United Airlines just is a fly in the ointment because we don't know if that good news is going to cancel the bad news. But this rounded top tells me, look short until the bulls prove something. Resistance, 245.83, 248.75, support, 244.40, 243.70, Clover. Clover is one of those swaggy stocks. So let me... So Swaggy Stocks is a free website. You can go to Wall Street Bets, Real Time Sentiment, oh, Ticker Sentiment. And they're discussing Clove the most this morning and they're bullish. Do I really, I'm not saying Wall Street Bets runs the stock market by any means. But sometimes when there's hype around a, high, a heavily a shortened name, it can make for an interesting setup. That key resistance, 1347, 1353. 1378 support 1290 1277 and then 1251 let's kind of zoom out let me get my bearings on this name we have plenty of room for a daily higher low on clover and we have this hourly eq i am personally looking bullish for clove bullish because of the wall street bets hype because of the consolidation healthy consolidation not a lot of bear volume and where is that daily higher low going to be set if you want to position yourself for a daily higher low it's usually a good spot to look for hourly oversold we're not there so now i'm just having to use this daily e eq which is an equilibrium which is where price starts to balance itself and then we try to find a winner we start playing tug of war with the bulls and bears and then however it breaks is the winner so I would be looking to position myself around $13, $12.90. Looking for that daily high or low, we may be a little early. Crisp, we're running out of time. Okay. So Crisp is having a bullish move, huge bullish move over news uh, this weekend with NTLA. We're running into that $165 resistance on CRISP. So remember, CRISP did not have good news. CRISP is having a correlation trade. So I would actually be looking to short CRISP if it could come back up to 165, have a two minute higher, higher high, higher low, lower high roll over. This could be a good short area for CRISP because it's up 11% just on the tailwind of NTLA. That should tell you how powerful the NTLA news is. I like NTLA to the long side. You can't short this beast in my opinion. You will probably, there's gonna be someone who successfully shorts this, but it won't be me. Support 127.10 and then we have a FIB level at 121.75, 105.09. On a five minute oversold, I will be looking at this thing hard, okay? How will I be able to watch it? Okay, I'm gonna look, tell me. No, that's 15 minute. I need to get on the five minute. Go to the time period you want the alert. Tell me when the RSI is approaching 30 or at 30. It's gonna tell me it's repainting, that's fine. But so now I have my alert set. Tell me, there it is. Tell me when we get a five minute oversold on NTLA, I'd be interested or I'd be interested down at 127.10. Beautiful chart, SoFi, it has the lock up this morning. Um, okay, so SoFi five minute, we are coming down. We have the lock up expiring today, so we could keep pulling down. So this thing, we're coming into the run runaway ramp, I like to call it. So you know when you're on snowy mountains and you're coming downhill and then you see those runaway ramps? We're coming into that runaway ramp. This is the ramp where we're entering pr prior price action congestion. So this may serve as support. So this thing could get extreme. Four hour is 17 RSI. Daily is not oversold. So we may have to wait till daily oversold to get a bottom fish out of this, but it really dumped 
Friday, 11%, already down this morning, 2%. But I would like like to get in this name for oversold bounce. And this is beautiful follow through from that daily EQ we were watching last week. So I really like SoFi for, not really, I like it for potential bottom fish because I'm expecting this waterfall drop. And in TCG, Dan, charting me and Dan, one of his edges are oversold bounces, which he does so well. And SoFi may fit the bill today. And if you're impatient with me and how I answer your your ticker request, I'm gonna go back at you. Why do you need my analysis so badly? Your position size, if I had to bet, is way too big. If you are emotional, impatient, uh, lacking discipline, just very desperate for my analysis, your position size is probably way too big. So I suggest you size down. There should be no desperation, no anxiety around your position or something is fundamentally wrong with your technical analysis or your position size or both. Okay, after SoFi, let me go a little faster, space. Was that a beautiful trade Friday or what? I think that goes into our Hall of Fame with Clove. Just one of the most beautiful moves. So we're pausing up here. It got a beautiful upgrade today. Oh, NTLA, not only did it have great news, it had wonderful upgrades to like $160. When you have upgrades that double your your last close price, that's a beautiful upgrade. So support 57.81, 57.29, resistance 45.87. We are coming into that self-fulfilling prophecy where we are so close to that all-time high. I would be shocked if we didn't touch 62.80. Now, am I going to put my whole account into that statement? Heck no. But I'd be shocked if we didn't touch that because we're so close. So I would be looking for this, a pullback on space for an opportunity to go long. Again, I actually have a butterfly left over from last Last week, um, I did a 60, 65, 70 call butterfly for this Friday expiration, and that decreased my size, and that's more of a lotto play that I could swing with very little risk. So I like space to the long side still. Tesla with some bad China news. Uh, it looks like they're overcoming it. 67598, your next resistance, then 6773. The key resistance, wait, on the daily, we close with the inside bar. So the key resistance is Friday's high, 693.81. Key low, 66.870. I have no idea, TR Kobe. IPOs, I really don't even pay attention. Unless it's like an Airbnb or Dash or Uber. Those were big IPOs in the last year. But like Honest Company, Oatly Milk, those aren't big for me. And I'm not interested in any. Yep, Klein is definitely another another swagger stock you can do it dragon man you can do it okay qqq we only have three minutes till dan goes live here's your key resistance 35072 35084 and then support 349 98 34929 spy here are your levels oh oh we're going this bowen's going so if you want to know, so up here we said, what was the uh, fib that we said? Let's do it again. So the fib 42.94, that's the extension level we're watching for ES. So how do we convert that to SPY? Well, we can, let's go do the SPY fib pull first. But you can also just drop a zero and that will usually give you pretty accurate results. So 42839 is the 1.272 extension. That's the next target. So that's the next resistance level I can give you is FIB up at 42839 support, 42630, and 42595. Okay. TR Kobe. All right, I sure Johnny. When people are respectful, I love to help you. S W I R. This is a pretty chart. Nice move. Nice rounded bottom on the daily, weekly. Nice rounded bottom. But the odds without news that we go straight to twenty two twenty two is pretty low. So just remember that twenty two twenty two. I'd be looking for a weekly at a lower high compared to twenty two twenty two. That'd probably be on the monthly. Yeah, a monthly lower high. But this chart looks great. RSI turning up. Beautiful. Nineteen thirty seven is your key support today. Okay, you know what? I didn't do, I didn't do Amazon. Let's do Amazon. 
and then I'm done. I'm looking for a cup and handle. Oh, this bull, that's a little, giving a little too much back on the weekly. So what I'd like to see now is, on the daily, I mean, is see a weekly bull flag on Amazon. 339418 is your key support Friday's low, then 336053. We had a lot of Amazon heaviness when the market was strong, strong. So be careful. They need to change the character of this hourly chart. SPY is not losing hourly EMAs at all, and Amazon is. That's a warning sign. All right, that's it for me. See you TCGers in the room. See you pre-gamers tomorrow. Thank you.